live anyway. I don't know what that was saying. I don't know. It's weird. Facebook is continuous. Every time we try to go Facebook live through Zoom, it asks me if I want to like buy something or it's some survey. There you are. You're live now. Okay. So with that being said, I am going to minimize that. I'm going to pull that up. All right. I'm going to do a, um, let's give this couple minutes. We're going to let a, uh, a few people go ahead and um, jump on. So we're going to give this a few minutes, get a, get a couple people going. Um, <laughs> Tell Christian I love his comment. I think Christian heard you. Well, I don't know if you didn't, Christian. I love your comment. Comment to win free stuff. <laughs> I'll show you with the Facebook. Awesome. No, I can see the comment too. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Turn. How, we how many people we have? We good? Hey, everybody. It's Graybeard. The it's Graybeard the Viking. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, so this is week number three on our weekly thing. Tonight, I've got two very special guests joining me tonight. I have Angela and Hannah. They are from Wandering in Wonderland. They are the official photographer for Greybeard's Vikings. A um, couple things before we get into speaking to um, these two young ladies. Um, housekeeping. Um, First things first, uh, Christian, yes, to your point, we are giving things away tonight. We have our weekly drawing. Tonight's weekly prize is free tickets for axe throwing. Um, this year with the axe throwing that we're doing, we're having a competition. Um, you will automatically be entered to win, or not to win, but to uh, compete for um, uh, the competition. Uh, once we go ahead and get all the uh, other things worked out for you. So if you win your tickets tonight, you'll automatically be entered into the um, competition. So Vikings Con this year is November 7th, November 8th. Um, Greybeard's Camp is actually doing the axe throwing for a second year in a row. Really excited about that. Um, things went very well last year. We've got a couple changes this year. But uh, like I said, a serious competition is going to go on. Um, so you enter on Saturday and you can compete to win on Sunday. Uh, so that's our first giveaway. Our second giveaway is our monthly giveaway. This is the big prize. This is what a lot of folks are really, really looking for. Um, in order to enter into the uh, competition tonight, just comment um, in the comment section, and that will automatically get you entered. But tonight's monthly prize is two weekend passes for Vikings Con. All right. And again, Vikings Con um, is November 7th, November 8th, um, you know, 2020. So um, so again, comment automatically enters you into, um, uh, chances to win. So with that being said, let me get to our guests tonight. So I've got two very lovely ladies with me tonight. Um, they could be sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> I live the please. It's what I try to do. Yes. So, okay. So, um, Angela. Anna, please yes. introduce yourself so that everybody know who you are. I'm Angela Reed, and I've been in photography for about four years. Um, so it's actually rather new for me. Um, as the kids grew up, I decided I needed something that uh, occupied my time as they grew up and moved out of the house. So, And I'm Hannah. I started with um, costumes and sewing. Um, when I was a kid, I liked to dress up. You couldn't keep me um, in regular clothes. And when I got older, I kind of didn't really want to abandon that. I found cosplay, which wasn't where my whole interest was, but then I found fantasy and I loved it. And I've been doing makeup and costumes um, since, pretty seriously, since right before the photography came around. Yeah, so we make a good pair because she- So again, on the pair, let, explain explain the connection. 
Well, um, basically, I got into photography because all my daughters are costumers. And so they were kind of like, take photos of me, mom, take photos of me. And I do come, like my grandmother was a photographer, my mother was a costumer. So I have a, a family history of it. But um, the kids wanted, you know, wanted me to be involved. And so I went ahead and started taking it more seriously, realizing that their skills deserved me to up my game. Um, and so we make a good pair because she's constantly coming up with the ideas for her costumes. But I also do some of the costuming um, and a lot of Becca's costumes I design. So you'll see some of that, but usually all my ideas I'm running by Hannah. Um, so we definitely work hand in hand together. Like some people will say, oh, Hannah, can you model for me? But she's like, well, I model for my mom. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, so I, we do kind of have a, a sinking and a synergy between us that works really well. Definitely. So you're gonna have to forgive me. Um, apparently one of the neighbors has decided to um, open up a dog park, which is really unfortunate because all day long it has been so quiet. It has been so, oh, no. so quiet. And now all of a sudden, of course, we're, we're trying to go live and be serious and yay, love life. Okay, so uh, my apologies for all the background noise. So, okay, um, getting back into, in, in, into you guys, so why don't we talk a little bit about what what other genres that that you actually move into? Because I, again, I've seen a lot of your artwork, I've seen a lot of your photos, and you don't just do um, you, you don't just do Viking. You do several other 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 types of photography. Let's, so let's talk about that for a few minutes. Um, well, I do I do anything historical. I really don't. Uh, have a vision for modern photography. I, I know I could if I had to, but if, if this is going to be my, my fun thing, then we definitely stay historical and usually have some kind of fantasy bend. But we started, we kind of started in steampunk. Uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, our Wonderland, it really is an extension of our steampunk. It is a, a steampunk version of, one, you know, Wonderland. Mm -hmm. So that's where we kind of launched out of a steampunk Wonderland world. Uh, we had started with like uh, some mystery parties that we did and uh, we had a lot of fun. We had fun creating a world. Uh, it's just for us, it's like a mental vacation. Uh, you know, can't always afford to fly to Europe and, uh, you know, all those exotic places, but we create those places in our yard or, um, you know, in an event. Uh, so that's, you know, where we, we kind of come out of. Um, so hold that thought because I have some questions for you about that, um, about, about how you find your locations. But before I ask that, let me go ahead and share my screen because I'm gonna go ahead and pull some of the um, photos up um, yeah. th that we have. Of course, they disappeared. So give me a second, let me um, refine them here. So I'll give a little introduction. This is, um, this first photo is when John and I actually met. Uh, we're at Vikings Con and I had a vision for a photo in my head and, and usually what happens is I see it in my head and then I kind of rattles around till I get a chance to take it. So I, I figured out that John was my man, but the first one, I didn't quite attain it. Um, it's It doesn't quite happen there, but John has his version of the story. I fear it's been exaggerated over time, but we're going to just go with John's version because no it's a way. It's a good one. Hmm? I, 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 no, yeah. I, I'm not exaggerated. I mean, you, you, you tried as hard as you could to, uh, to, to burn my face off. I mean, that's just, well, you know, just I can get now, my computer to work here and, and actually get the photo. I, I'll be more than happy to show everybody. But so um, the newer version of the story is that his eyebrows were melting, but I'm, I don't recall <laughs> that. And as you can I see, like my things, eyebrows. Yeah, but if you can if look at the photo and there's no eyebrow melting, but he said um, that I caught a spirit on fire. There it is. She's a demanding photographer for sure. Look, I had a vision and he was just a model, you know, <laughs> get on board. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So this is really funny. Um, you guys can see me struggling with my um, computer because yeah. I have to, I have to, you know, do everything. Apple and when I'm scrolling through I can't okay. see him because well, then I'll just give we, a little bit more. So I had him all set up earlier because when we did our, our pre-production meeting, we had it. So I don't know. I know why. Okay. So this photo, I don't attain what's in my head. Um, it, despite the fact that John's beard uh, catches on fire. I did not get I got the photo it. I, I wanted. Um, but I got it later. Uh, so we'll show the, 
not achieving my vision. And then the second one is John somehow trusts me again. I, I don't know. There we go. So this is at Vikings. Now, do you see, I don't know. The beard looks intact to me, John. It, it does. But if you notice the eyebrow in this one area is starting to kind of. It is. It's starting bit. to melt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Th this, th this was such a great time. Um, this is from Vikings con year one. Um, that's when, when I met you and I'm kind of standing there doing my own thing, minding my own business, trying to entertain. And then this crazy lady yeah. comes up with a camera. I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Can you, can you like sit in front of the fire? And I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. And I just sit in front of the fire and I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. And mm -hmm. then you're like, Oh no, 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 no. I mean, sit in front of your fire. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> damn. but you're like, no, not good enough. And then, you know, 20 minutes later, after you kind of started yelling at me and that kind of yeah, stuff, I mean, like, sitting in the fire and I'm like, okay, if this is what you want, then it's fine. So, you know, but the really cool thing is it, it, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a great introduction because it led to the next photo. You trusted me enough. I did. To let me finally get my photo. And there it is. That's what was in my head. Um, the, what we figured out, see, and I do learn my lessons is to bring the camera closer to the fire and the and the model further from the fire yeah so yeah. there's yeah that was a good lesson learned um and the first time hannah met you you said mm -hmm. hi your mom tried to catch my beard on fire i believe that's yes. yeah yeah and then he gave me alcohol mm -hmm. so, so. We she's over friends. 21 so. <laughs> yeah no <laughs> legal <laughs> So yes, what I wanted here, um, and John does really well in this photo, is to give a little bit of that um, I've lived, and, and it's, he's a little weary, it's the end of the day, but he's got some uh, determination in his eyes, and John doesn't consider himself a model, <clears throat> but I think what it is is that he's playing uh, himself in, in a Viking character, and, and so maybe that isn't modeling for him, but I felt like he... He had the, the expression I needed. Um, if you zoom in on that photo, it does give just a little slight weariness about, uh, you know, life is, is a lot of work sometimes. So I really like how that second photo uh, turned out. Mm -hmm. And I, I did, uh, was able to capture the flames. Of course, we needed more flame at Vikings Con. We didn't mm -hmm. have a huge fire going on. Right. Um, and we were able to catch for that flame. And then we actually have the fire lighting your face, which is great uh, because it, it shows that you're actually in that place. Right. Um, for my photos, I like to make sure that, you know, the, the viewer knows what they're supposed to be looking at. And I feel like the fire leads our, our eye to John, but then the background doesn't distract. You're mm -hmm. in a place, uh, there's a tent, there's oh, wood. But you're the subject. One of the, most, one of the most beautiful parts, beautiful parts about this photo is actually part of the campfire, and it's you know this this red glow, this red amber right here. Just for yeah. me, because I, I'm an avid camper, and and you know this has been a way of life, and you know we sit and you know front campfires all the time, so it's it's right. nothing for us. But th this is one of the most beautiful things that that I think I could possibly imagine. That just that color orange. Um, you know, last weekend, I, I actually, you know, did the interviews inside of my inside of the house and, and I was in my living room. And if you notice, the background was all orange. I have no idea what this is. I did. I had turned off. That's fantastic. Apparently, the um, kids county school decided to call and I okay. just all that stuff. Oh, wow. This is a disaster. I am so sorry. You there still? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm here. Okay. I'm, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, wow. That was, that was the, the, that was the county, um, the, the county school board calling with something to <laughs> tell us about the, the kid's school. Okay. This is a disaster. I, there we go. There, there, Let's get back to this. Um, let me get back to my share screen and then we'll, so while, while I'm doing this, um, I, I was gonna, one of the questions I wanted to ask was how do you find your, your locations? Is this something, you know, that you just kind of like, you're always looking for somewhere, you're just kind of scouting something out or 
you know, do you like find somebody's piece of property? Well, wow, this is like really, really nice. Can I'm just gonna go knock on their door, be like, hey, how you doing? I just want to take some photos. Do you mind? Or you know, how does this work? How do you how do you come up with some of this? Um, mostly we shoot in our own yard. Uh, we're on three and a half acres, and we have woods around us, so that's very fortunate. Um, and it, so I'm very thankful of that. Sometimes my neighbors will go to our neighbors. Most of the time, um, if we're going to shoot out, it'll be at a park or a public place. Um, mm -hmm. Some places are really strict about allowing photographers. They assume all of us are millionaires. So like Duke, I think they charge like $100. It's pretty crazy. So <clears throat> we, um, we do try to be careful. Sometimes we'll sneak in a place uh, with ignorance, but for the most part, we do try to ask ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So, all right, that's really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and, and switch over to the, the, the next photo. And there's a name. Okay. Yeah, so this photo, the reason why I included it is because it is um, a very early photo. It's one of our first photo shoots ever. Um, and this, I want to also encourage people, if you're, in, you're starting in your journey with photography, starting in your journey with costumes, that... <clears throat> You know, start where you are, because in three years time, you may be in a different place. You, you, hopefully you've improved. So this is a very good example of our improving. It's a good costume and those wings are pretty awesome. Um, but I feel like we upped it for the next one. And the next one was taken in January of this year. Um, so this is Becca and she's one of my, my youngest daughter and she's one of my models. We well, call this one a steampunk flyer. She has a kind of storyline that was, um, I think, born out of uh, being a very cold photo shoot, actually. And she's like this rebellious character mm -hmm. that um, runs away from home because she doesn't want to go to school. She wants to go fly. She wants to live life a little, a little Tinker Bellish. Yeah. So we we definitely try to have a storyline behind all of our uh, photo shoots if we can help it. So the next photo, you want to switch to the next photo, John? Yep, let's see here, let me, okay. So the next photo, we were able to kind of up our game. Um, she definitely has more of a Tinkerbell feel here. We were at the Transportation Museum in uh, North Carolina, actually in their scrap yard, because the nice area was in the back, but we were in the area that was uh, that is, a little easier to get to. That is, uh, the, 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 the train cars in the background are just absolutely, you know, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, they were just a, it was a rusted out area uh, that basically the public didn't go to. It was like their scrap yard. And so mm -hmm. we decided to tuck away in there. The wings are made by a friend of ours, uh, Wolf, and he, he made himself some wings like that too. Uh, but we upped, you know, we, you, I, if you notice the skirt is the same, but I added a second skirt underneath and um, the wings are just new, totally redone. She still has the same kind of feel about her and a lot of the tools are the same from last time. Mm -hmm. But we upped our, you know, we upped it in level basically. And I think this is a good example for people to see that, you know, start where you are and then add to it and add to it and add to it. Um, you know, even my photography is much better. I've got the clouds there. Mm -hmm. I've got the, um, her posing is better. She's got kind of a cute little smirk on her face. The fact that the train, I've got it at an angle, so it kind of pulls you into her. Um, so there's just a lot of little pieces in that photo that have been, the, it's been upped. It's been brought to the next level. Um, actually, the piece on her, on her wrist is done by Jackie um, with uh, Rigar Crafts. Yeah, that little piece there, she did oh, that. Okay. Yeah, and I added it to the bracer. The bracers are the same, but I added a little extra piece to it. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of fun with that photo shoot because we were able, it was actually January and one of those weirdly warm days. Um, so we, she's, she's, yeah, and there wasn't anybody around. It was empty. Yeah. So she's in short sleeves and, and, and some look somewhat happy. She doesn't look cold, so man. No, no. That's the nice thing about where we live is we can get away with photo shoots year round if we watch right. the weather. All right. That's, that's fantastic. So I, again, I, it's my, my grandfather, uh, before he passed away, um, he's, he's been passed away for a long time, but when I was a kid, um, he was on the uh, B&O Railroad and he was a, in the mail car 
So I've got a small affinity for some of the trains. So seeing seeing the industrial stuff in the background just looks fantastic. And and quite honestly, when I look at it and I look at the uh, boxcars in the background, it, it it reminds me of a a you know a, a post World War II era somewhere in Germany type of type of thing, you know, because again you've got all the rust and everything, and then you've got all the the um, uh, the paint is fading and running and you know that kind of thing. So it, it's it's very well done. It, it maybe has a little bit more of a, a diesel punk feel is what you're saying, which would be the, the World War II time period. For us, uh, steampunk is just really fun. Uh, as much as we love Vikings and that's our heritage, steampunk has just got a bit of silliness about it. Um, there's always kind of a Charles Dickens, uh, maybe a sense of humor behind every photo we do for steampunk. We usually are on the verge of laughing because none of it's very serious. We don't do too much serious steampunk. Most mm -hmm. of our steampunk is just kind of ridiculous. Um, right. But Charles Dickens actually was very funny. People don't realize till they, you have to read between the lines, but he was actually quite humorous in mm -hmm. all of his writings. So we launch out of his world a lot too. Fantastic. Now, steampunk is, so, steampunk is such a, a huge, huge community. And, you know, it's one of those oddities where they don't have a lot of smaller events. They just have these really, really large events. But, um, you know, it, it's something that I know my family's kind of uh, attracted to a little bit. Um, yeah, well, you can go to a thrift store and get clothes, you know. Absolutely. It's something yeah. that's really easy to get into. You know, you mm -hmm. can go to, you know, you can go anywhere and get gears and sprockets and, and every, anything, mm -hmm. like that and, you know, just spray paint and glue. And it, it's really kind of easy to do. And Hannah's actually the one that got me into steampunk because I've always loved Victorian, but mm -hmm. she's the one that got me into steampunk. So. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, so... Go ahead. The, the, yeah, yeah, we'll switch over to this one. Um, this is a, a very uh, dramatic photo. Of, this is the before. Yes. Of the photo. Um, so I'll let Hannah talk about her costume, but I'll, I'll let her do that on the next photo. For now, um, basically, we have a huge, we're in my neighbor's yard, and, and we have a huge fan um, blowing on her. And in photography, it's very hard to get your subject and the sky to um, because the, the camera wants to uh, wants to capture the, the person correctly or the sky correctly. So what I did with this one was I actually took a photo of the sky before. And then I took a photo of her and I merged them. Okay. So that's what this is about. And we have a huge fan blowing her. Um, we get a lot of photos. So this is one of 40 photos and this was the best in the 40. But as you'll see in the, the after photo, I've actually done some work. Um, we, we, I dropped that sky in. The hair, we've added a little bit of the hair so that just a little bit from another photo just to give us a little more volume. Okay. And um, so that, that photo, again, it was one of those ones that we, um, I had rattling in my head. I wanted that leading line from her hair is leading, the, the, the actual cape is leading, her arm is leading, all of that is leading to her face. And then her face is there and then the hand brings you down. So that whole photo, your eye goes through it like an arch. Mm -hmm. So, and then Hannah can tell you about her costume because she made that, that leather armor that she's wearing. Yeah, um, I call this character uh, the Valkyrie. Um, I wanted to bring a, a dark sort of, you know, the Valkyrie character is, is well respected in, um, in your Norse literature. Mm -hmm. And the stories are, yes, you know, these are, these are women who came and, and taught men how to fight. They um, took the men to Valhalla, but it wasn't that they were deeply afraid of the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie wasn't someone that they were afraid. They were excited to go to Valhalla. Um, right. so she's, she's a fighter. She's wearing armor because, you know, um, her role is often to teach men how to fight with, with um, different weapons. And um, she's, she's a little bit dark. Mm -hmm. um, so, I wanted a lot of drama. I always want a lot of drama in my characters. We match that way. <laughs> so, um, so. It's a fantastic, fantastic photo. And, and, and I love the fact that Hannah, you, you took the time to do a little bit of research to actually create that character and, and create, with some, create something like that. Because it's just, it's very well done. Very, very well done. It's very impressive. 
I, I don't like considering myself a model. I um, don't actually model and pose very well, but I like to consider myself maybe like a fantasy model or a character model because I create these characters and I can place myself in their shoes because um, I live in a world of imagination, I guess, but I can, I can be that character and have that attitude and bring that life to them because um, it, it makes sense to have that story in my head. Mm -hmm. Very but if you tell her to model as herself, she she's like, hmm? Yeah, she doesn't know how to do Regular that. Hannah's very nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we go too much further, I, I, I want to backtrack a little bit. And okay. what I'd like to do is, um, Hannah, I want you to take a couple minutes and explain to everybody what you do for a living, what, you, what it is that you actually do for a living, because... We're very appreciative of um, of what you've done and, and what you do. So um, why don't you go ahead and, and let everybody know what you've done? Because again, I'm going to say this, not all heroes wear capes, and you are certainly one of them. I mean, you are definitely a hero, but you, you don't need a cape because, you know, you're just that awesome. Well, actually, you were wearing a cape. Never mind. Yeah, um, yeah in this picture, you, I so, so I take that back. So anyway, with that being said, um, Let's let's go ahead and um, go ahead and, and and let everybody know exactly what it is and, and what you've done. Sure, um, I'm a registered nurse. I work in one of the big hospitals here in Raleigh downtown. Um, I am typically on medical surgical. I love what I do, and um, you know, this whole we know what we're going through. We're going through a worldwide pandemic right now. As the whispers kind of started to build. Um, one day the executives showed up on my floor and told us that we were going to be the Corona COVID-19 um, cohort unit. And so um, at the beginning of the year, we were converted over. And since then I've been working with Corona patients and have completely changed what I do in a lot of ways, but also at the same time, um, I'm still a nurse. <laughs> this is my job. Uh, I didn't necessarily expect to be in these shoes, but you know, I have this amazing team behind me. So I, I definitely feel like I can do it. And she works so she can afford to do this. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta keep working. I have to wear, I have to wear capes so she can so, afford. <laughs> so you work as hard as you do to support mom's habit. That's fantastic. I love it. I see how this is. Like she was first. This is, I this followed is like, her. Um, this is one of those unhealthy, yeah. like mm -hmm. I feed her issues she feeds my issues kind yeah. of hobby it's either an awesome combination or a horrible combination i'm not sure we'll figure it out in like 10 years when we are in therapy <laughs> but it, again we we appreciate everything that you do and everything that you've done and and again just just to brag about you a little bit more i understand that you're a charge nurse and you're very young to be you know somebody <laughs> in a position like that so that's that's incredible i mean that's something to be very proud of and, and congratulations to you and that's fantastic thank yeah mm -hmm. thank you my pleasure. So I'm going to go back to sharing the screen and we'll go ahead. And while I'm going ahead and do this, um, why don't you tell us where you came up with for, for the name of your company? Where, where did you, how did you come up with that? Uh, Wanderings in Wonderland. Well, I, when we do Wonderland, we do transform our backyard into Wonderland. And there's actually an area in our backyard that we call Wonderland. So it just it felt like, what are we going to do? I got this vision. Um, of something I want to do and and how how can we name that correctly so I just felt like Wonderland income it encompasses everything that we did because from Wonderland you can launch into so many worlds um, mm -hmm. steampunk fits in Wonderland um, the, even you know some of our fantasy things all fit in Wonderland so it just felt like that was the right name. Um, it is a little bit clunky of a name, but it, people have told me over and over that they really, really think that's a very good description of what we do. And I don't even call it Wanderings in Wonderland Photography, I call it Wanderings Wonderland Studio, so that people understand that it's not just a photographer, it's a group of us working together and we have a studio that we work out of sometimes in the yard. Yeah, I think ultimately we wanted people to look at these pictures and feel like they saw a story in them and uh -huh. that they could be transported a little bit that, you know, it, it's not just a picture, you know, you sit and kind of stare at it for a minute and you notice little things and just like, you know, John, you said your favorite part of, of your picture was the embers, you know, mm -hmm. someone else is going to look at that and they're going to kind of stare at it and they're going to find a different favorite part and I think we, we wanted people to just sort of stare at 
the picture and like get something from it, right. feel something from it. It's it's not a model and a picture. It, yeah. It's a story that's a picture. And, right. and I'm pulling, pulling you into the story, pulling you into the photo. Come join us in, in our world of creativity. And I'm glad you said that because the, the next photo that I have up, I mean, I, this, I love this photo. This is such an awesome photo. No, number one, you know, Jocelyn, um, my daughter, Jocelyn loves, you know, um, Alice in Wonderland. She, we, we, I think we've watched every single one of them a couple of times together. And, and I have a little affinity for it myself. And, you know, this, this photo just, I mean, it, it's Alice in Wonderland. It, it, this is it. This is Yeah. That's what I, I was, I was looking at the photo shoot and I was like, which one? One of the things that um, you'll notice that there was cards there on that one mm -hmm. side there, there's actually cards hanging from the ceiling. And so I'm on a ladder pointing down at her. So I wanted the cards to kind of pull you down to her, the cards from the ceiling mm -hmm. and, and kind of pull you into the photo because um, it, it kind of leads you, but you don't, uh, you don't want the background to compete with your subject. So definitely, you know, Alice is the um, subject here. And mm -hmm. I did cut it a little. She's got a queen of hearts on her, on her chest, the cart. You can't see it in this version of the photo very well. But, um, but you definitely, she has that wonder in her eyes. I appreciated that. That's Sarah, one of my, one of my other daughters. I actually have five daughters and they all model for me. Um, but Sarah does a really, really good uh, Alice. Uh, it's yes. almost as if she doesn't have to act when she's <laughs> Alice. <laughs> if you know Sarah, you know she she can really pull an Alice off. Um, but yeah, so that photo is just probably one of my favorite of our Wonderland photos. Um, mm -hmm. And that was a, she has two versions of the Alice costume that we worked on. Um, and that's probably her favorite. Mm -hmm. It's like I said, it, it's such a beautiful photo. And so I have to ask, this is all of the hair. That's that's all her natural yeah, hair. Yeah, that's her hair. Um, yeah, she's got some hair if you've seen her photos. Um, and then that background is just a checkered backdrop. And it's actually kind of thin. I have to make sure it's nice and flat when we use it because otherwise um, the squares aren't square and you definitely want that in this kind of a photo. Okay. All right. Um, so let's see what we got here for. This is. That's I Becca. Love fact, I, I, I love the dog. Yeah, I, that's um, Kaylee Lorette's uh, dog. She breeds them poodles mm -hmm. and she uh, she has some beautiful dogs. So I was really happy to be able to use her poodle. It just seemed this is a Lolita dress that Becca's wearing. Um, and we got the hat from like Bazaar and Mad Hattery, like a I think Bizarre they're, noir. Yeah, I think in Italy um, or Greece. Greece. And so we wanted, uh, we just felt like this character should have a poodle. And so I happened to have a friend that breeds them. And so she, uh, she brought her, her poodle, Olive. And mm -hmm. she was very well behaved. She's actually a young poodle even. And a very calm dog. We were at the tobacco district in, uh, oh. down, down in Durham. And so they, they just had the one um, train uh, again I love to add a train um, but and Becca added the bubble pipe that was her idea because um, that she just decided that her character should blow bubbles with a pipe all the time <laughs> <laughs> and that's part of that kind of silly hanging out with yeah. my dog blowing bubbles with a top uh, hat I, I love it, it it's yeah. you're right it it, 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 it actually has a, a, a air of childness to it you know it's, yeah. it's almost innocent you know, you know, it's, it's okay to be silly sometimes because I, I, I know a lot of people that are very serious and, you know, there's just so much serious. Right, so exactly. I, I love it. It's kind of whimsical, you know. Yeah, Hannah was there for that shoot. And we, when we walked down to that area, it wasn't too crowded that day. We were very thankful, but people, Becca looked so cute that people were like, can we get a photo with you? They were stopping her <laughs> like she was a celebrity to That's get photos fantastic. with her. Yeah. I, love it. I love it. That's great. Yeah. Um, so um, real quick, I just want to take a pause and I want to ask um, our producer if anybody has any questions for us at this time or yes. um, so One. we can go ahead. Okay. Uh, from Talon, what are some of your favorite events? So, of course, steampunk. 
or um yeah, just in general just any event vikings con yes <laughs> <laughs> shameless um, plug Sadly, steampunk, we had some steampunk events going on around here and they've been kind of drying up. Um, so that's been too bad. If we want to do an event, sometimes we have to create it ourselves. Uh, some, our group sometimes will do a steampunk at the park, like mm -hmm. a picnic. Uh, so that's been really nice, but it, we just haven't had a lot. And then um, for us to go now, it looks like we'd have to go to Georgia. So mm -hmm. it, we used to have events and then it's just kind of, like things haven't been falling through, you know, going, uh, happening as far as steampunk around here lately. Definitely my favorite events are always ones where I feel very like transported in the world. I can, at Viking Scott, it's great because there's all the encampments and you wander mm -hmm. from sort of place to place and talking to people. And, right. um, you know, I, I kind of, I spend most of my time just goofing off and enjoying costumes and creativity and sharing that that creative love that everybody else has and um we're in maryland but we're not we're we're <laughs> we're back in time for just right. a week yeah yeah we're it's we just, it's a mental vacation just for a minute like I, I don't have to remember you know that that monday you know I, i'm starting another 12-hour shift or something like that it's right it's and i can just live in my fantasy and i can all those storybooks that i read growing up or coming to life <laughs> mm -hmm. that's yeah. awesome so right. we, we have another question yep. so uh faith says it's hard to edit pictures do you have any beginner pointers okay so as far as um beginning as as far as photography would go i would say um lighting 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 um even in this photo that you're seeing in the screen <clears throat> that my subject is properly lit there isn't any weird shadows across her face you can use a cell phone you can use any camera and improve your photography by being more aware of your lighting so start with lighting watching videos on youtube about how to do proper lighting how to find proper lighting what is bad lighting um, and not having too many things in the background competing bright spots um, especially if it's dappled lighting i mostly shoot Toward, and John knows this towards sunset. I shoot uh, usually about two hours before sunset is when I'll start shooting because my lighting gets gentler. The, the magic of golden hour, it, it's real. So I don't shoot at noon. People will say, well, can't we go get a photo? No, because the lighting is bad and mm -hmm. I will not get that magic and I will fight editing that photo and it will take more work. So for me, start with lighting and you can improve your photography and it costs no money to improve your photography with lighting. All right, fantastic. Okay. okay. Uh, what genre is next, which you haven't done yet for photos? Um, I mean, we haven't done it a lot. I have only one costume. That sounds terrible. I only have one costume. I'm working on Italian Renaissance right now. I, I just haven't, I, I haven't done a, a lot in like, more historically accurate because I, I don't like being accurate. Mm -hmm. You don't like being confined with the rules. I, I don't like rules. No, I, I want to do my own thing. Right, have the create creative freedoms and the imagination you yeah. know, to, to do something. Yeah, you know, that's but we because of my and so I do have an Instagram, Wanderings in Wonderland, um, and a Facebook page. But I do try to keep within certain niches and not go too far outside of that. And my reason is that you do want to kind of grab an audience and not be all over the place. And it's a very difficult to have because I have a core of costumes in my costume room that we draw, we draw from. And, um, oh, there's a shirt, there's a skirt. And so we decided to limit ourselves to certain categories. Now, some of my daughters, um, they do a lot of cosplay and they, I'll get photos for them, but I won't necessarily put those photos on my Wanderings in Wonderland Instagram because right. I do try to stick to my niche, steampunk, mm -hmm. um, Vikings, but the really Vikings is Middle Ages. So I just go Middle Ages, Renaissance and Victorian era. And that, that's about what we're doing. Okay. Okay, before my last question, I want to okay. share my, have her explain my, my favorite three photos to edit. Okay, so I, Apparently, Taryn wants you to explain her fav her three 
favorite photos. I just like how the edit goes. And no, how you do the editing. Yeah. Apparently, I Okay, so I think we're going to need to change. Um, let's yeah. see. What photo's next? Okay, so let me just, um, how much time do we have? Uh, okay, well, uh, we have some time. So, uh, let's, let's backtrack to this. I, 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 she, she reminded you me, so. Um, I think, I think yeah. this is, all right, so this is the photo that she's talking about. Okay, so I'll be, I'll be quick on it. Um, we were leaving um, up at the falls and it was bad lighting. <laughs> that was the, the thing I just told you not to do. That's what I did. Um, but we, we were traveling. I, we weren't going to be able to come back to this spot. Um, so I decided, Hannah, just, well, let's just give it a shot. Um, kind of saw how the path, I'm up on a bridge and I kind of saw how the path of the river and then her little toe going in, mm -hmm. but the, it's just blowing out back behind her. If you notice, it looks, it looks bad. You got all those yeah. bright, bright Yeah, spots. it's just, it's, that's when you should not shoot um, unless you can go into Photoshop. So right. the next photo um, is when I took it into Photoshop and I fixed it. Um, it looks a little dramatic to me right now. It's actually a couple of years old, so it, it's possible that I would edit it differently today. Um, mm -hmm. But I did fix those blowouts in the background and I did create, create um, that eye again. Your eye is following the path of the, the river and it's coming right. to your subject. And then I think what I did was I just threw it in Lightroom again and did a second fantasy edit. And, and so I did three different edits. I mean, two different edits on this one. And that one, um, just a little more dr drama. Uh, it actually ended up in that one, it matched the other photos. Um, mm. But I went ahead and posted all three. Um, of course, everybody has different favorites. That actually isn't my favorite anymore. I probably wouldn't even edit the photo to, to look like that today. Oh, don't, say, um, don't, yeah, don't say that. It, it's so. Let, let, let me tell you I why. I like seeing the path of the edit. Yeah, it, it, Taryn loves seeing the path of the edit, but it's, I love this photo because it's got some of my favorite colors in it. Number one is yeah. it, 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 Hannah. Your hair is absolutely beautiful, and then yes. you know, really it, really with, with it highlighted that that bright red is just fantastic. The, the color of the dress went from you know, this kind of dull blue to this almost purplish, which is fantastic. But I grew up on the water and I, I've spent a lifetime being around, you know, oceans and creeks and the bay and all of these other things. So some of the most beautiful water I've seen is, you know, some of the more um, when we go camping and we go up into the mountains and you see the mountain streams and you see some of this aqua um, colors, you kind of hit that in this, this last edit that you did. And, you know, so again, See if, it, if it'll work and it's not okay there we go so some of these colors in here you know yeah. I, i've been places and the way that some of the lighting is some of the shading it's all of it i've seen this in real life so even though you've edited this i look at this and, and it actually draws me back to places i've been before which is why i love the photo as much as i do thank um, you um that one's an i actually did a lot of airbrushing with it um yeah. i had to go in and actually recreate so some of uh, photography is having to be an artist because I actually had to go in and redraw uh, that material there because it wasn't it wasn't in the photo <laughs> in, the, in the before if you look so okay so um, I'm getting the the yeah. oh no I'm gonna okay we have a question uh, what do you do with the pictures do they get publicized art exhibits um, that would be great art exhibits yeah um, <laughs> Mostly they go on my Wanderings of Wonderland Instagram and Facebook page for now. Um, I am going to probably do set up so that I can start selling them. Uh -huh. um, but we do a lot of photos for product photography for different makers at this point. Uh, I kind of felt like I've been learning in the last three, four years of doing photography. So it's been a huge journey for me. Um, and then Hannah, too, with all of her makeup. So, yeah, that's, I haven't done anything uh, amazing with the photos yet, I'll be honest, but I am getting ready to set up for people to buy prints and things like that. It's, it's, it's a hobby out of love. It really yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I get that question. What do you do with it? Why aren't you, why aren't you in Hollywood? I'm like, because um, I'd, I'd, I'd like this. I don't know. Hey, John, can we make sure that we go ahead and go to the one that's the timekeeper or, because yeah. I want to show the makeup on that. Um, we, Hannah did the we'll makeup. Do that in just a second, but um, while while I get that going, what I want you to do is um, go ahead and let everybody know where they can they can find you on Instagram and Facebook. Go ahead and um, give us okay. that information. 
Yeah, it's oh, it's Wandering Us in Wonderland um, on Instagram with a down slash in between the words. And on Facebook, it's just Wandering Us in Wonderland. Okay, so... Wandering with an S. Wanderings with an S, John. <laughs> S, yeah. It's okay, it's okay. Um, so if we go back to... Is it this one? Yeah. Yes. So that one is the timekeeper and the concept was mine as far as the clock. She is the, the timekeeper from Wonderland uh, mm -hmm. in the Wonderland story. And I created the hat with an exploding uh, hat. But I said, Hannah, can you make Becca look like wood? And uh, she's like, okay. And so Hannah made Becca look like wood. And if you zoom, if you're able to zoom in on her face, that uh, makeup job is phenomenal that Hannah did. Um, Becca looks like wood. And people ask often, who is that? Um, again, Jackie did that neck piece there, but um, in the clouds, that's how they really looked. It was an indoor shoot. We decided to run outside real quick because we noticed the sunset looked good. And we just threw up on a stump and took the photos. Uh, this is the best one out of the photos. So sometimes that's, you know, that's how life is. You just jump. Right. But Hannah, go ahead and describe that makeup. Well, I, I'm, I'm not a makeup artist. I'm not a, um, a body painter, but I do like YouTube. Um, I can learn anything. <laughs> and so I think kind of this is this is a, a bit of body painting, a bit of makeup art. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're doing something that you want to sort of pop off of a picture, you really got to pay attention to your highlights. Um, and so what you can't see about this picture is that there's actually a ton of white in there because there's so much dark. She's, she's brown. She's a piece of wood. I have to, you have to go in and highlight with, um, with streaks of white so that you catch all those lines and all that detail work you end up doing. Um, and so that you don't sort of just muddle into like one flat piece or, or, or a lot of just brown on top of brown. And that's something that artists know very well. And that's not something that I technically know very well. And so, um, I think for me, that was a little bit of a, of a, of a learning curve, but that was a lot of fun. I kind of got into it. I literally just had, um, a picture like of a board that I liked, um, on my phone and I was, I just painted it on her face. And then I started with some, um, eyeshadows and yeah, so her face looks like wood. It, it just, it, <laughs> as, as it was going, I remember being so, so intense on this photo. Like I, I had a migraine. And so the only thing I could focus on was doing this makeup and it made right. me feel better. Her hands are even done and you, you can't quite see it in this oh, photo, yeah, but her are. hand is painted. Both mm -hmm. of her hands were painted. Um, yeah. And that, cool. you spent like two, three hours? Two or, two or three hours. Yeah. yeah just on just makeup. sort of intensely. And I kind of came out of it and I was like, wow, that looks amazing. But it was like, it was for a while, it was just like this, this you can't get a hold of Hannah. You, right. You're just not answering the phone. She's not talking to people. And um, then it was like, wow, two hours later. And I was like, what's happening? But it looked yeah. The companion photo to this one would be the next photo, John. And it, it has a similar feel to it, um, but it's a mechanical cat. And the same idea, if you zero in, Hannah did that face she's supposed to be this is this is emily again a sister another another one of my daughters um that that hand is pulling you in um but hannah did this makeup also yeah this one um i think i just had a bronze eyeshadow that i'd broken by accident i'm a hoarder i don't like getting rid of anything uh -huh. and so i at the day of packing up i was like oh my gosh i have this and and I ended up making like a face paint out of a broken eyeshadow. Um, and again, like all those bolts you see, they have to be highlighted in. Um, you got to have shadows. And then Emily is, it's, she's a traumatic person. She yeah. can pull off something like this. A lot yeah. of people would feel awkward, you know, kind of as a copper, yeah. um, a copper cat. Um, but you definitely, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a big look. Yeah. That's and if you can perfect. zero in on, over there to that little, there's uh, a little mouse, the mouse on the, hat, on the hand, just zoom up or just scroll over that mouse. Becca made that mouse. Uh, Becca is actually an incredible artist play herself. Oh, wow. That's, that's bolts. Great. We found things in my husband's garage. And, and yeah. just recycled them. Cool. Yeah, she made that so, though. I said, can you make us a mechanical mouse? She's like, what? And, I was like, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, all right, I'm all about it. So one of the things that we did want to ask you is um, you do a lot of these photos and and you started out kind of doing them kind of, I guess, for yourselves and, you know, just as a hobby. But I do know that 
you actually work on some trades and can you talk about some of the people that you actually take photos for? Um, we work with Zutsu quite a bit. Um, actually, if you if you go to the, the photo of Jordan at the sunset at the lake, that's a good example. Um, so what we'll do is we kind of get sponsors, what I call them sponsors, but they, they work with us for these photos. So this is Jordan, one of our models, and the, the actual garb he's wearing is from Zutsu. Um, they sent me the garb so we could use it. The jewelry he's wearing is from Crafty Celts. The horn um, is from um, Cra Froggy Viking. Froggy Viking. Um, so we're um, kind of repping for their photo or for their product. And then I take these photos and I send them to the, to the makers and then they can use them for advertising. Um, so then we've gotten product into our photos and that's kind of right. how we pull it off. Um, is that I'm not forking out the money for all these, but I'm giving them something back. I'm not asking them to just send me their stuff for free. Right. Um, I'm paying them in photos. I ask them if, can we do a barter? And a lot of times it works for them and it works for me. I, you know, if it doesn't work for them, no big deal. But if it does, um, then we'll do a trade. Uh, usually I just base what the retail value of the product that we keep. But, you know, it's just, it's just business, you know, if, it, if it's beneficial to both of us, then we'll, we'll work it out. But that's what I do a lot, like a lot of the, the items that you see people holding, it's all product that has been sent to me. Mm -hmm. um, but they can use it for photos on their Instagram or on their, um, the one of Hannah where her hair's blowing is on Crafty Kelt's um, header. And so you'll see photos from the Viking show and you'll see a photo of Hannah, which is fun. Yeah. Uh, so I don't want to be a cover girl. I want to be a crafty Celts girl. Yeah, she's a crafty girl. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Danny loves to hear that. That's, yeah, yeah, he does. So, um, so, okay, with all that being said, we're starting right out don't run out of time here. We got a couple yeah. of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, first and foremost, thank you both so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Um, I think I've learned a lot, and hopefully, a lot of other people did. Um, but before I get to our, our our winners for our contest, go ahead and let everybody know where they can find your stuff again one more time. So Wanderings in Wonderland on Instagram or on Facebook. Okay, awesome. All right, so as I said at the very beginning of the show tonight, everybody, um, I said we had two drawings tonight. We had two giveaways. Our first one is for um, axe throwing. Again, this is for Vikings Con uh, year 2020. Um, it is November 7th, November 8th. And do you want me to do and tell you the number? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, so again, what we do is we got a little numbers thing is if you comment it, it automatically entered you into the drawing and we have a list of everybody's name who commented and we have numbers. So All right. So we're gonna the go ahead. drawing is Christian Elmore. So Christian, congratulations, Christian Yay. Elmore. Actually um, <laughs> won a, a free thing of axe throwing. Um, so that's fantastic. Uh, kudos to you. Now the now the other giveaway we because we're doing monthly giveaways as well. So this is our actual very first monthly giveaway. So our prize tonight is two weekend passes to Vikings Con for the entire weekend. And I'm going to go ahead and do the um, random number on the screen for everybody so they can see it. Yeah, just just hit the randomize. Just hit the randomize button. Yeah. Okay. Random button, it's random, and I can't see that. Okay, it's, it's backwards. Number 16. So number 16. <laughs> it is uh, Faith. Faith, congratulations, Faith. That is awesome. Um, Faith is actually, she was with us last week. I think she was uh, with us the week before. So she's been with us through the whole entire time. So congratulations, Faith. You just won two free passes to uh, Vikings Con in November 7th and November 8th. Um, so again, Angela, Hannah, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, you know, I really appreciate you guys taking the time and and going through this. And, um, you know, we hope to see everybody else soon. Everybody on Facebook, you guys have a very good night. And um, um, like I said, stay safe. And, and we'll see you guys next week. Um, you know, same, same thing, same time. And I'll have, I have, um, I've already spoken to somebody. I've got another special guest, but, uh, um, but I, I'll let you guys know who that is later in the week. You guys have a good one.